This MMA 30 segment is powered by The Gun Store. Next time you're in Las Vegas, if you want to shoot a real machine gun, do it at The Gun Store at 2900 East Tropicana. FM News Radio 100.5 KXNT. This is the MMA 30 Radio Hour. And tonight, 10 o'clock, make sure you tune in to Vegas TV. You can find that on Direct TV or on Cox Communications. It's channel 14 or 25, depending on your provider. But Vegas TV tonight, 10 p.m. Make sure you te- check out the MMA 30 TV show. And of course, you can visit us online for plenty of video content. If you're a fan of mixed martial arts and you want to see interviews and check out radio bits that we do on a daily basis, along with some great articles, check out MMA30.com. Right now, looking for Forward to UFC 135. Three weeks from today, it's happening in Denver, Colorado, Mahoney. This is an exciting fight card. I'm looking forward to this one. You know, top to bottom, there's a lot of really good fights on this card. You got Gomi taking on Nate Diaz, so kind of uh, an interesting fight there. You got a heavyweight matchup, Ben Rothwell taking on Mark Hunt. I really like the co-main event, Matt Hughes and Diego Sanchez, and obviously the headliner, Quentin Rampage Jackson taking on the champ, John Jones. Matt Hughes versus Diego Sanchez. It's an interesting fight. Diego Sanchez struggled there for a couple of years. He says that he's cleaned up his act. He's got two wins back-to-back over two tough guys, Martin Campman and Paulo Tiago. I think that he lost that fight to Martin Campman personally. But his fight against Paulo Tiago, he looked great in. Before that, he lost to John Hathaway. He lost to BJ Penn. But before that, he's got wins over Clay Guida and Joe Stevenson. So Diego Sanchez is a legitimate contender. He is a tough guy, but the way that Diego Sanchez tends to win is by outworking his opponents. And when it turns into a slugfest and a brawl, he's got this pace that he can fight at that tends to confuse and he outworks his opponents. But I don't really see Diego Sanchez as much of a finisher. And my question for you is, does Diego Sanchez need to go out there and finish Matt Hughes. I think BJ Penn wrote the uh, playbook on how to beat Matt Hughes. Just come out there and just throw it all at him. When it gets to when it starts to grind it out, you know, and I think Tiago Alves kind of did this too against Matt Hughes. When it starts when when the fight starts to get grinded out, that's when Matt Hughes really starts to shine. He saw that against Matt Serra. We saw that against Gracie. And we saw we saw Matt Hughes actually show some pretty good striking against Ricardo Almeida. He was, he was on a pretty good win streak there until he ran into BJ, uh, BJ Penn's uh, fist 21 seconds into that fight. But I think there's some similarities to BJ Penn and Diego Sanchez. Diego always pushes a really good pace. And I think Diego Sanchez, this is a great fight for us as fight fans because these you got the old school. You kind of got a guy who's... You know, not quite an up and comer anymore. Who's kind of established himself, and you know, this is kind of. I think this is kind of one of those changing of the guards fights. Yeah, it possibly could be. The the thing that worries me though is that Diego Sanchez is a fighter that talked about he had a lot of troubles because he let himself go. Yeah. He wasn't mentally weak. Uh, yeah, he wasn't remaining spiritually pure enough. He was getting into a lot of smoking weed and drinking beer got, when he wasn't he in training He lost like $150,000, got embezzled from him. Yeah, I mean, he just said that he was going through a lot of things at that time. So Diego Sanchez uh, has said that when, whenever he falls to that to those sins, as he calls them, and, and gets too involved with drinking or with smoking weed or with you know getting involved with girls that he shouldn't be involved yeah. in, it's really tough on on him mentally mm-hmm. and spiritually because he is a very mental and spiritual fighter. However, Diego Sanchez, I've had a couple of interactions with him over the past six, eight months, and there's been a couple of instances where I've seen him a little bit under the influence yeah. of alcohol. And, you know, I don't want to put the guy on blast, but I've just seen him in settings where he's had obviously a few drinks. Mm-hmm. And if he's saying publicly that he's completely staying away from that stuff and that that's why he's going to perform so well in this fight. And then I see him doing those things. It just kind of makes me question where he's at. I think the return to Jackson's camp is a big part of that, too, though. No, the, the return to Jackson's camp is a big part of it because Diego Sanchez, when he's working with Greg Jackson, tends to be a more focused fighter. He's got solid training partners down there in Albuquerque, yeah. New Mexico. And I think Greg watches after him. You know, I think sure. they, they, they look after their people down in Albuquerque. But the other question is, where is Matt Hughes? I mean, Matt Hughes has got a solid record. He's 45 and 8. He's, he's, he's a Hall got, of Famer, man. There's no question he's a Hall of Famer. I mean, he's got losses to George St. Pierre. He's got a loss to Tiago Alves. And he's got a loss to BJ He Penn. was the Anderson Silva before Anderson Silva of the UFC. He was. Yeah, there's no question. I mean, since in his last six fights, he's lost uh, three of them and he's won three of them. However, if you look at his record overall, again, 45 and eight. And the guys that he's lost to, Tiago Alves is legitimate. He lost a flying knee there when Tiago Alves outweighed him. And then he lost to George St. Pierre twice and BJ Penn once. None of those guys 
None of those guys are slouches. Nope. The guys that he's been beating, Matt Serra, Henzo Gracie, Ricardo Almeida, none of, none of those guys are slouches either. He also beat Chris Lytle. Yeah, I mean, Matt Hughes is legitimate without a doubt. You know, this guy, I, like I said, I think this is a fight to determine who's still in the upper, upper echelon of the welterweight division. Sure. You could see the winner of this fight um, not necessarily taking on uh, like BJ Penn or Carlos Condit, because I think whoever wins that fight is number one contender. Yes. But maybe one step down from winner Jake Shields, Jake Ellenberger. Yeah, that'd be a good fight. Yeah. So BJ Penn, uh, excuse me, Diego Sanchez versus Matt Hughes, co-main event UFC 135. Main event for the light heavyweight championship. John Ooh. Bones Jones, Quentin Rampage Jackson. This is a fun fight. Yeah, man. John Jones and Rampage, they're going at it on Twitter. There's been some uh, controversy between the camps. Did mm-hmm. they was there a spy in Rampage's camp? Let is me break John down Jones how, how all this happened? Basically, Rampage Jackson became suspicious that there was a spy in his midst. Mm-hmm. He thought somebody was within his camp that was uh, not supposed to be there or was funneling information out to his competitor's camp, John Jones. Now, Rampage Jackson for this fight at UFC 135 is actually training in Denver so he can get prepared for the altitude at a private muscle farm facility. It's a 35,000 square foot huge facility that Muscle Farm built out, and you can't buy a membership to this place. Mm-hmm. It's a private facility where they'll bring in high-level athletes to train for whether it's a football game or a football season or a big fight like this with Rampage Jackson. So Rampage Jackson is here in this camp. And he starts to think that there's mutiny going on. Somebody is trying to find out what's going on in his camp and is feeding that information back to John Jones's camp. So what Rampage does is he gathers up all of the people that are his intimate, close-knit group. And he says, guys, I've broken my hand. I have to pull out of the John Jones fight. This is all a ruse. Mm-hmm. Rampage Jackson is doing this to test his camp. Well, 30 minutes later, Rampage Jackson's manager gets a call from the matchmaker at the UFC, Joe Silva, asking whether or not it's true that Rampage Jackson broke his hand. Now, reportedly, the person that called Joe Silva and told him that Rampage broke his hand is the manager of John Jones. Oh, boy. So somebody within Rampage's camp allegedly has been feeding private information to this guy, Malki Kawa, who is the manager for John Jones. And as a result of that, he called the matchmaker at the UFC and said, here's what happened. That, of course, rooted out the spy. Yep. Rampage found out there was somebody in his camp that was offering information. They haven't said who it was or anything like that. That's not really the point. The point is, is that allegedly... John Jones's manager or John Jones directly through his manager are trying to cheat and get information on Rampage's camp. That's an unfair move. That's like Bill Belichick setting up a video camera and recording plays. It's against the rules. You just cannot do it. I know a lot of people aren't thinking, oh, it's not a big deal. He's just, you know, you can watch any of Rampage's uh, previous fights and see what he's, his game plan is going to be going into this fight. That's untrue. You can actually you get intimate knowledge of guys who are only supposed to have that intimate knowledge. Like if maybe Rampage gets injured and he doesn't want to disclose that going into this fight. Or more importantly, just what he's preparing for, yep. what he thinks John Jones is going to bring at him. And if you've got that sort of inside information, that could be devastating yep. because then John Jones knows exactly what Rampage has been preparing for. He can adjust his own game plan. You'll see guys in mixed martial arts that don't even want to warm up in the same room as each other right before a fight. Like yep. I'm talking about minutes before. But when you've got weeks or months of preparation time, it could be devastating to Rampage. And the fact that John Jones is being accused of cheating because something that his manager did or perhaps he did himself, I think it's devastating to the image of John Jones. I absolutely agree. This guy, these type of uh this type of political uh I don't even know if it's political, but this type this type of these types of actions in mixed martial arts, they don't have a place for it. You know, this is we don't need this taint on mixed martial arts. John Jones is a huge favorite over Rampage Jackson already. Minus 550 in some places yep. is about the highest I'm seeing. He's almost a 5-1 to one favorite almost everywhere. So John Jones, a huge favorite over Rampage Jackson. I don't think that you can discount Rampage Jackson. I think that uh, John Jones is definitely going to win the fight. However, Rampage Jackson, uh, since 2005, has only lost two fights. One was a very close split decision, or a unanimous decision, rather, for Forrest Griffin. 
Mm-hmm. He lost that fight, and he also lost to the number one contender, who is Rashad Evans. And he put he hurt Rashad real bad in that in that in that third round of that fight. You look at who much he's ever. beaten too. He's beaten Everybody. Leona Machida and Matt Hamill Dan and Keith Henderson. Jardine and Vandalay Silva. I think the line on this is off. Yeah, I think that if you're going to take a flyer on this one, put it on Rampage. Yep. Uh, Rampage is probably going to lose this fight, so don't load up on him. However, this is a close. I think this. Fight. I think the scandal could be motivating Rampage Jackson though. Three weeks from today, UFC 135 is happening in Denver. John Jones versus Rampage Jackson in the main event. That's going to do it for us today here on the MMA 30 Radio Hour. Make sure you check out MMA30.com for the latest news, videos, and more. And, of course, tonight, 10 p.m. on Vegas TV. Check out the MMA 30 TV show. I'm Dave Fair. That's Jason Mahoney. Thank you so much for listening. We'll be back next Saturday at 4 p.m. here on FM News Radio 100.5 KXNT. This MMA 30 segment is powered by The Gun Store. Next time you're in Las Vegas, if you want to shoot a real machine gun, do it at the gun store at 2900 East Tropicana.